Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about uh, the staging of CA cervix. Mainly we're going to focus on the 2018 FIGO guidelines for the staging. One thing extra what was changed in the staging of CA cervix was they started using staging pointers with respect to radiological and pathological findings also were included in the staging. So if a radiological image was included in the diagnosis, the subscript of R was used and if a pathological diagnosis was used, that the subscript of P was also used. And one more change what was introduced was in stage one of the races, they stopped considering the horizontal dimension of the lesion, but they were more bothered about the depth of invasion. So these were the changes which were made in the 2018 guidelines than the previous. So how to remember the staging disease spread? So firstly, uh, this is a schematic diagram where this is the cervix, this is the vagina, this I have considered as the pelvic wall, okay, on either side. And the green structure here you are seeing will be the ureter, okay. So now, in any stage one of the disease, especially in malignancy, the disease process is confined only to the organ of interest. So all stage one of CS cervix, the disease is confined to the cervix. In stage one, again, depending on whether it is a macroscopic disease or a microscopic disease, they have divided into A and B. In A, it's a microscopic disease where the depth of invasion or the largest dimension is less than or equal to 5 millimeter. Okay, and again, it is divided into A1, that is 1A1 and 1A2, whereas 1A1 is any lesion less than 3 mm, whereas 1A2 is 3 to 5 mm. That was stage 1A. Now, any lesion which was more than 5 mm was included in B. Now, again, B was again further divided into B1, where the lesion was more than 5 mm in the largest dimension, but less than 2 cm. B2 was more than equal to 2 cm, but less than 4 cm. And B3 was any lesion more than equal to 4 cm. So this was the staging which was included in CA cervix of stage 1. So 1 was mainly confined to the cervix. Now coming to stage 2. What happened in stage 2? You should remember it starts spreading to the nearby structures. So it started if the disease process started spreading to the surrounding parametrium but not reaching the pelvic wall. See, it ends before it reaches the pelvic wall or if it reaches the upper two-third of the vagina, then it was considered as stage 2. Now, the next big question is what is A and what is B? See, cervix is a longitudinal structure. So, any disease process going downwards will have a earlier numbering than the one which is spreading lateral to the parametrium. So, in stage 2 of CS cervix, what happens is the A will be anything which is spreading towards the vagina. So, upper two-third, if it is included, then it is 2A and if it is spreading to the parametrium, then it is laterally not reaching the pelvic wall, then it will be stage 2B. Okay. So, stage 2 was again A and B. Okay. A is vagina is involved only the upper two-third and again they divided it into 2a1 and 2a2. 2a1 was the lesion less than equal to 4 cm and largest dimension. a2 was more than 4 cm. b was anything which is involving the parametrium but not reaching the pelvic wall. Okay, so this was staging of second stage. Now coming to the third stage. What is happening is the disease process is spreading laterally also and downwards. Okay, so lateral and downwards. So laterally if the param uh, parametral invasion goes up to the pelvic wall or if it's including the lower one third of the vagina. Then it's included in stage 3. 
one more thing what you can see is while it is invading laterally up to the pelvic wall one structure which comes in between will be the ureter so whenever any lesion is infiltrating or obliterating the ureter what happens is hydrourethral nephrosis so if on imaging hydrourethral nephrosis is detected then blindly you can reply that the stage has reached stage 3 one more extra thing which was added in stage 3 is when the spreading is happening so much to the parametrium the lymphatic start getting occluded so consider if this is the iota common iliac vessel external internal iliac so lymph nodes which are there along the vessels okay so the pelvic lymph nodes and the paraiotic lymph nodes also start getting included in stage 3 just because of the lateral spread so this was the uh, brief for the stage 3 again i'll repeat it in stage 3 you can remember it like a is again towards the vagina but it will be lower one third of the vagina involved okay stage b is it has reached the pelvic wall okay or if hydrourethral nephrosis is detected then it is stage 3b then stage 3c is lymph nodes involvement because pelvic lymph nodes are earlier involved than paraiotic again they divided it into 3c1 and 3c2 3c1 is the involvement of pelvic lymph nodes whereas 3c2 was involvement of paraiotic lymph node okay so this was the summary for stage 3 of staging for cs cervix now all the structures which are surrounding the cervix are done cervix vagina parametrium ureter hydrourethral nephrosis and lymph nodes are done so le left will be stage 4 stage 4 for any disease process in any malignancy you can blindly write a will be pelvic meds and b will be distant meds okay so pelvic meds will be if the structure or the disease process is involving bowel okay bladder anteriorly then it's a anything else if there's effusion if there's hematogenous spread to liver ascites or virtues inguinal lymph nodes involved then it will be 4b that will be distant meds hope this was useful thank you so much for watching